now on Fast Track News. Have you heard about Purdue and Indianapolis? And do you know what it means? Do you know about the split between IU and Purdue at IUPUI? Yes. Uh, not really, but I've been hearing that like there's been like a transition going on. Uh, not really, honestly. It's, it's kind of just like a, an extra like campus. Plus, one Purdue alum may make his debut in the NFL this week. And hear why one Sesame Street star will be speaking to the Purdue community in a few weeks. All your campus news, weather, and sports is straight ahead. Fast Track is back. Purdue went through a complex divorce in Indianapolis last spring with a longtime rival, Indiana University. Happy Friday, Boilers. It's September 29th, and I'm Samuel Roos. And I'm Sydney Hollingsworth. The two universities agreed to split IUPUI into two separate campuses. How will that work, and how does it impact Purdue students? Reporter Ellie Acra has the story. Last spring, Purdue University announced the creation of Purdue in Indianapolis with its split from IUPUI. But what exactly is Purdue in Indianapolis? And what does it mean for current West Lafayette students? Do you know about the split between IU and Purdue at IUPUI? Yes. No. Uh, not really, but I've been hearing that like there's been like a transition going on and they're trying to separate two schools and make them more of their own and as well as like make Purdue a better name, a bigger name. And do you know what it means with Purdue in Indianapolis? Uh, not really, honestly. It's, it's kind of just like a, an extra like campus, essentially is what I, I think it's ever. I spoke with Derek Schultz at Purdue University to learn more. Purdue University in Indianapolis is the first comprehensive urban campus for Purdue University. So it is a real footprint and presence for Purdue in Indiana's capital city. And it's not just the capital city, but also the technological and innovation hub of the state of Indiana. And the plans stretch further than the original IUPUI campus. Purdue was granted $60 million from the Indiana state government for a student success center and plans to expand Purdue's presence across the city. I think what students can expect to see is a real physical presence in Indianapolis. For so long, Purdue has been here in West Lafayette and kind of operated its own way. And we've conveyed Purdue degrees with what happened with IUPUI downtown, but it's felt like those two campuses have been separated. Now it's a full integration of those two campuses. And what does this mean for Purdue students in West Lafayette? So I think what this will do for Purdue students in West Lafayette is create a lot of experiential learning opportunities in Indianapolis because it's an urban center. Uh, there will be employers there, and there's going to be a lot of demand for a STEM-ready workforce for those employers and Purdue graduates to have internship opportunities, co-op opportunities, entrepreneurship opportunities in Indianapolis uh, coming from West Lafayette and the short drive down I-65. Purdue University in Indianapolis is set to launch in 2024. Until then, the university will continue working to connect the Boilermaker tradition of the past to the innovation of the future. Reporting for Fast Track News, I'm Ellie Acra. We'll be watching Purdue's next steps as they take a giant leap into Indiana's capital city. While the academic climate shifts in Indianapolis, what will the weather look like here in West Lafayette? Meteorologist Veda Kirsch is here with the first look at the forecast. Happy Friday, Boilers. I'm meteorologist Veda Kirsch and take a look at our forecast for the day. We're looking at 77 degrees. It's gonna be a very warm, comfortable day tapering down into 57 for the evening for that Friday homecoming parade. It's going to be very comfortable. Absolutely zero rain or precipitation, pairing that with winds around 3 to 7 miles per hour. So it's going to be a great time to get outside and enjoy those homecoming festivities. Take a look at our hourly, breaking it down a bit more. We notice that we will have a little bit of cloud cover that's actually going to burn off as soon as we get past noon and looking into the afternoon. We'll be peaking at 77 degrees at 3 p.m tapering down into 62 degrees near the end of the evening here. So for the weekend, our homecoming outlook, we have some beautiful weather for you. The game gonna have 82 degrees and sunny, no rain at all, sticking with that pattern for Sunday, peaking at 84 degrees. So we're gonna be heating up a little bit, come back to hear more about the weekly forecast later. Seasonal flu shots are now available for Purdue faculty, staff, and their dependents covered on a Purdue health plan. drive through vaccine clinics began this past Wednesday in the Purdue West parking lot and will continue through October 5th. Be on the lookout for more ways to roll up your sleeve and get protected this fall. There will be several opportunities around campus to get your annual vaccine, including at the Center for Healthy Living. 
Students can also get their shots along with faculty and staff at the Purdue Pharmacy School. You will need to make an appointment though. Check out the QR code on the screen for more information. Famed actress Sonia Manzano, best known for playing Maria on Sesame Street, will be a keynote speaker during Purdue Global's Observation and Celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. The event will take place on Wednesday, October 11th at 1 p.m. over Zoom. She has spent over 40 years on Sesame Street and is also an accomplished children's author. Manzano is an inspiration to many as she became one of the first Hispanic characters to appear on national television. Registration is required prior to attending the online event. The homecoming football game against the Fighting Illini kicks off tomorrow at 3.30 p.m., but festivities around campus begin tonight with the homecoming parade. The homecoming parade begins at 8 and will feature several student groups. Fan favorites such as the All-American Marching Band and the Purdue Reamer Club will be in attendance. Be sure to check it out and see all of the amazing floats and organizations you may be interested in. To get students excited for the homecoming game, the Purdue Student Union Board hosted a pep rally tailgate event from 5 to 9 on Wednesday night. In the black and gold gym at the Co-Rec, homecoming towels, stickers, and pins were distributed to attendees. Along with the giveaways, students got the chance to paint their own shoes and enjoy games. A variety of tailgate foods were offered, such as hot dogs and popcorn, but for those with a sweet tooth, they also served lemonade and cotton candy. P-Sub certainly had quite a lot planned to get the students into the spirit of homecoming. Up next, a play is making its debut right here at Purdue University this weekend. And still to come, Purdue announced some big investments, and reporter Julia Prickett followed the money. Purdue to invest $1.3 billion for students and faculty. But where's the money going? I'm Julia Prickett for Fast Track News, and I'll break it all down for you right after this commercial break. Football, it's the best time of the year. You know what else is great? The world's largest and fastest mascot. You can't have Purdue football without the trains. Look for the Reamer Club outside Stewart Center, 12 to 5 p.m. on Fridays before home football games for your chance to ride the Boilermaker Special for free. See you then. Purdue recently announced that a lot of money for the university was on its way. We know it's coming, but where is it going? Reporter Julia Prickett has the story. Sounds you'll continue to hear on Purdue's campus in the upcoming months or even years. This summer, the Board of Trustees approved a two-year $1.3 billion major capital project investment aimed to benefit students and faculty in July, the university released an initiative snapshot of planned projects across academics, student housing, research, and athletics. This snapshot breaks down where exactly these billion-dollar investments are going and what is to be expected under current or future construction. Breaking ground earlier this year was the third in McCormick student housing. Just west of Hillenbrand, this new development will hold over 1,000 student beds by fall 2025. Another major development are renovations across university classrooms and libraries. 
With over $70 million set in renovations of existing facilities, these will be implemented campus-wide classroom and library enhancements. I spoke with PhD candidate Courtney Smith about these renovations to gain her perspective as a Purdue student and a graduate teaching assistant. I think any time that we're investing in the classroom and doing updates, I mean, especially with how quick technologies change, the job market changes, there were a lot of demands to meet. So my hope would be with these investments that we can update and provide students access to resources that will help them for entering the market that they're going to be entering. This $1.3 billion capital project aligns closely with Purdue's strategic innovations and also grants construction from multiple research labs, such as the Zucro Laboratories, to be completed by 2025. This laboratory will be used for a variety of topics, stretching from semiconductors to food systems to national defense. Purdue President Meng Chang says that the university is determined to always take the next giant leap, and there are many people to thank. And I quote, the Purdue team continues to work hard to invest in the places and programs for excellence at scale, and such investments are indeed at scale. We thank all sources of funding, including state appropriations and philanthropic gifts that provide the majority of the funding for enabling the university to invest in Boilermaker's future. With $1.3 billion earmarked for these transformative projects, Purdue University is poised to be a leader in education and innovation for years to come. This is Julia Prickett reporting for Fast Track News. This investment is definitely something to look forward to at Purdue. Looking for something to do this weekend? Consider heading over to Pow Hall to see the world premiere of El Mito, or The Myth of My Pain, a play written by Andrew Ricon. This is Purdue Theater's first production of the year. In a season filled with plays that center around mythic storytelling, El Mito tells the coming-of-age story of Michelle and her family, who run a local access telenovela. While they deal with the loss of their grandmother, Michelle must battle demons that the family tried to leave behind when they immigrated from Colombia. This is the first time this play has been produced on stage, so if you decide to check it out, you'll be among the first to have ever seen it. The production runs tonight and tomorrow at 7.30, and it closes on Sunday at 2.30. You can get your tickets online at Purdue Theatre's website. Coming up shortly, we are tracking a heat wave for our first week in October and the second week of fall, starting at 77 degrees here on Friday and peaking all the way up to 87 degrees on next Wednesday. That's a 10 degree warm up. So if you're thinking about putting away those summer clothes, hold off for just a little bit longer until we can really settle in to those October fall temperatures. Do you enjoy being a skull? I enjoy it quite a bit. Why? Love the guys, love being around everyone, love the energy love just being able to walk into my house, say, you know, he's down to go to Kane, so he's down to go do this, go do that. Just having like five guys, like, hell yeah, let's do it. My brother has, you know, own brother's back, and like, you know, I can go to them for anything. Um, you definitely work to, you definitely learn to work with people. Uh, obviously not everyone's gonna agree all the time. You get really good at uh, just making, finding compromises, trying to make the best work for everyone. How would you describe Skulls? Being a skull is for life, but the brotherhood's for eternity. The Center for C-SPAN, which is this organization, the CCSC, what we do is we facilitate like a bunch of organizations, uh, different programs for Brian Lamb, which is the founder of C-SPAN. Anyone can be part of CCSC, whether it be through our various internships, um, our competitions, just to be involved, even like our student community meetings that we have every week. Anyone can go, you don't have to be communications or poli side. You just meet so many people, the connections you make is kind of crazy, the range that CCSC has. So yeah, it's just provided me so many opportunities to like kind of achieve the goals I have personally and forward to like whatever career paths I choose. At Purdue University, we're not just students, we're future leaders. Join Air Force ROTC to embark on a journey of honor, excellence, and service. Learn, lead, and soar to new heights. It's not just a commitment, it's a calling. Purdue Air Force ROTC, where dreams take flight. Are you ready to rise? I got a switch in my head. I go from living to dead. You got me seeing all red.
Happy Friday, Boilers. I'm meteorologist Veda Kirsch and taking a look at our forecast for the day. We have a very comfortable and warm day for you, 57 degrees for the low, going up to 77 degrees for the high, pairing that with no rain or no precipitation today. And that's going to be a great weather for our homecoming parade that we're looking for tonight. And we are going to be tracking a bit of a warm up looking into next week. We're starting at this 77 degrees, going all the way up to a 10 degree warm up of 87 degrees on Wednesday, trailing around the mid 80s in the midweek here. But for a homecoming weekend, we do notice these temperatures increase a little bit up to 84 on Sunday. It is going to be a bit of a steamy one for that Saturday 3.30 game. So if you're going to be outside tailgating, try to focus on getting rid of the sweatshirt or something so that you can make sure to stay comfortable out there. But we are looking at absolutely zero precipitation, all sun for our weekend. And I do want to talk a little bit about how abnormal these temperatures are for our first week in August, uh, first week in October here. So taking a look at our 1990 to our current temperatures, the averages, we are about 10 degrees warmer for the entire first week in October here. So it's pretty, it's pretty warm out there and it's not going to be very seasonable, but we are going to want to appreciate it for a little bit longer because it's probably the last warm up we're going to see in the West Lafayette region here. Talking a little bit about why we are seeing this. So this current weather pattern that we have across the United States, it's called a blocking pattern. It's actually because this jet stream here is separating this warm air mass from this upper level cold air. So we have all this southwest wind coming up and keeping us very warm and very dry as we have this clockwise rotation here. And this is something that we're going to be tracking with our seven day as we do notice complete sun across the board. No, no precipitation for our upcoming week here. Temperatures are going to be boosting up, up to an 87 degrees on Wednesday and then looking a little bit cooler on Thursday as the clouds come back and our temperatures drop a little bit more. But for now, we have an absolutely beautiful weekend for you to get out there for the homecoming game, followed by a wonderful week for our second week in October. Just ahead, a first look at Purdue women's basketball during their open gym session. Also, a glance at Aiden O'Connell and his potential NFL debut. I'm Travis Davenport. Don't go away, because sports is next. I mean, every year is different, but it hasn't changed that much. Our league is just ominous, and you better lace them up tight and be ready to play every night. If not, you're going to get beaten. The Purdue Boilermakers are taking on Illinois in what will be the third straight home game in a row. This week, it's homecoming as the Boilers are prepared to get their first home win in the Ryan Walters era. Looking back at last week's game, Purdue played under the lights on Friday against the Wisconsin Badgers. Fast Track sports reporter Sarah Foodie has the story. I'm here in Ross Aid Stadium where the Boilermakers just versed the Badgers. Although it was a tough loss for the Boilermakers, the vibes in the stadium stayed immaculate. As soon as Coach Walters stepped foot on the field, the Boilermakers were ready to play for that first at-home win. Many calls that the refs made unfortunately set back the Boilermakers, but the fans still kept up the energy all night long. Let's see what some of the fans have to say about the calls that were made during the game. How do you feel about the calls that were made during the game? I think they're really biased. I think they paid the refs. They're unacceptable. Yeah, it, was clearly, it was rigged. Rigged. It's clearly not defensive pass interference. Yeah. I think the coaches could have done better. The refs, yeah, uh, I don't know what those calls were. Um, yeah, unless the rules change, like, I don't know how that should be a touchdown. Look, I understand that refereeing is a hard job. We all understand that. But for the love of God, can some go the Boilermakers way at some point? I was at the Syracuse game, nothing went our way. I was here tonight, nothing's going our way no matter what goes on on the field. Can we get at least one call when it matters on the, during the game from the refs? Anything at all. Comeback season, we're winning the next game. Yeah, 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 next game is our game, yeah. next game. Although it was a hard loss for the Boilermakers, especially with it being Coach Walter's third at-home loss, we still have hope for the Boilermakers for the rest of the season. This is Sarah Foody reporting for Fast Track News. While the Boilermakers continue to struggle on the field, the fans have continued to both show up and provide an electric environment. With fall officially here, basketball season is rapidly drawing closer. 
as Purdue women's basketball took the court in Mackey on Monday. Sports reporter Garrig Serbieski takes us inside the action. This week started open practices for Purdue women's basketball as the team looks to build on last year's success that saw the team reach March Madness for the first time since 2017. After a back and forth season that saw the Boilermakers fighting until their last regular season game, expectations have been raised for Katie Gerald's team going into her third year as head coach. Purdue will be returning all five starters, including Abby Ellis, Caitlin Harper, Madison Layden, Janae Terry, and Layla Smith. They will be combining with a top 25 recruiting class in what should be an exciting season for the Boilermakers. Um, great effort. Uh, I think our, our five returners have done a really good job of kind of, you know, leading and teaching the, the new group um, what's expected. The men's team also started their practices on Tuesday of their highly anticipated season. With high expectations, Matt Painter's tone going into the season is to just have fun. She just kind of finding that collection of individuals um, that are going to play and shoot with confidence. Reporting from Fast Track News, I'm Garrick Sarbieski. In other news, former Purdue basketball star Robbie Hummel has recently made a jump in the news industry. Robbie Hummel has gone from one of the Big, Big Ten's top players to one of the Big Ten's top commentators. Hummel is reportedly leaving ESPN and signing with NBC and Fox. The former Purdue great will still be working with the Big Ten Network as he will continue to provide color commentary for Big Ten teams. And finally, former Purdue star Aiden O'Connell could be in the line to see the field this Sunday for the Las Vegas Raiders. The Vegas quarterback situation is in limbo after starter Jimmy Garoppolo entered concussion protocol this past Sunday night. While O'Connell is currently listed as the third string quarterback on the Raiders depth chart, head coach Josh McDaniels has been non-committal as to who whether O'Connell or veteran Brian Hoyer would start versus the Chargers. That's a wrap for sports, but stay tuned. Fast Track will be right back after this quick timeout. What is one message you would give to your fans? I would just have to tell them to keep pursuing their dreams. And cut. So just put a little more emphasis on pursue your dreams. Okay, got it. If you want to make movies, PSP is the best place to be. Your ideas can come to life with our club. One of the many benefits of being a part of PSP is actually the amount of gear we have available to rent to you for no charge at all and no experience necessary. Join Purdue Student Productions today. We are energetic, we are motivating, and we are unique. I don't think we can beat Quidditch. Are you looking for a new hobby? Or do you want to have a fun evening with your friends? Then come climb to new heights at the Co-Rec Climbing Wall. Now it's time for our question of the week. What is your favorite dining court at Purdue and why? Alex Kuban ventured out to find answers from students. What is your favorite dining court and why? Uh, my favorite dining court would probably have to be Earhart because of their ethnic food options. Uh, my favorite dining court is Earhart Hall because I work there. Um, I would say that my favorite dining court is Earhart. Their cultural food is probably the best, but for desserts, I would say uh, Hill and Bread. Um, I would say Ford Dining Court. Um, for me, it's the location. I'm in a Pike fraternity, so it's right next to us. Definitely Wiley Hall. And why do you look, prefer Wiley the most? Definitely because of the cookies that they have. Um, my favorite dining court is Wiley because they have a lot of different options. Uh, I'd probably say Wiley. Their burgers are actually surprisingly good for cafeteria food. 
And even if I don't like it, like Chick Fil A's right there. So wrapping up our weather for the week, we have an absolutely stunning week. We have sun basically all across the board here. Looking at 77 degrees on Friday here. We are going to be ramping it up all the way to 87 on Wednesday, but mostly focusing in the mid 80s. And you can expect completely dry weather, absolutely no rain in our forecast here. We do notice on Thursday the clouds are going to be rolling back in with that temperature dropping down. But for now, you got to get outside and enjoy this stunning week, their first week in October. It's not going to stay like this for too long, as this is probably the last warm up we will be seeing in the West Lafayette region for the year. So for now, get out this weekend and enjoy that home coming weather. If you just can't get enough of Fast Track, you can check us out on social media. You'll find content about sports, upcoming events, and updates on the show. This week, look out for a tease on our coverage of Purdue's homecoming game. Find us on Instagram and TikTok at Purdue Fast Track News. And we will leave you with that. Check in on our socials and YouTube channel for updates on what's going on at Purdue. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Hi there, my name is Vikram Jaithluk and I'm the founder and president of the Purdue chapter of the University Blood Initiative. Over the past two years, we've been able to collect over 300 pints of blood to be donated to local hospitals and you can be the next one to help out. I donate my blood at the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative. Hi, I just donated blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Right, I donated my blood through the University Blood Initiative at Purdue. And I donated my blood at University Blood Initiative at Purdue. Hello everyone, my name is Orion DeWitt. I am president of the Purdue Student Production Student Organization. And I'm Mari Gergel. I am the publicist of the club. The club is open to any student of any major, and we have opportunities for any club member to rent gear, which includes cameras, tripods, lights, anything you really need to make your own movie. What's best is that you can help in any way that you want. So you can be um, an actor or help in the crew, be part of the cinematography, anything that you want, and you can make this uh, an experience that is meaningful for you. You should join Purdue Student Productions because it's a great network networking opportunity for students both in production major and out of the production major. If you want to get involved with the club, you can find us on Boiler Link or on Instagram at Purdue Student Productions. So if you want to make your own movies or be an actor, join PSP today. So I am the president of the ski club. I am pretty decent at skiing, I would say, but I still am cautious and reserved when I ski. And um, Copper, one of the other officers, um, was like, we're hitting this today. The last day, we're going to do it, and you're going to come up with me. He really convinced me, and we got to the top of the lift. And as we were going up the lift, the lift was literally like this. <laughs> then we get to the top, and I was angry. We're looking over this ridge, and you can't see where the hill goes. You're looking over the edge, and you don't see anything. Once I got over that little ridge, and I was able to kind of see where I was going, once I got to the bottom, it was like a great accomplishment. If you want to have the time of your life, definitely check out Purdue Ski and Snowboard Club. Imagine a world where Olympics and Paralympics are unified as one and where all athletes at all levels have equal opportunities to play and perform at their full potential. Athletics has been such an influential and transformative aspect of my life. So to me, RISE is about ensuring that every person that has the desire to participate in sport has the opportunity to do so. This organization is about recognition. We believe in recognizing excellence where it is found, especially in Paralympic sports. RISE is about driving change in our community and beyond. We hope that through our events and initiatives, we can galvanize people for our cause and inspire them to create an ever-growing network to help achieve our mission. It's about connecting people of various backgrounds and who truly care about creating meaningful change together. We develop projects and hold events to bring people together at the interface of inclusivity, sports, and engineering. Our goal is to promote the equality of all sports and to improve sports performance and accessibility. 
Join us so that you can have a major contribution in creating meaningful change.